When I was in uh, eighth grade sociology class, the sociology teacher said 90% of the people work 90% of the time to do what they want to do 10% of the time. And 10% of the people work 10% of the time so they can do what they want to do 90% of the time. I said, okay, I'll just be in the 10%. Someone has to make up that 10%, why can't it be me, you know? And uh, that's sort of the way I look at it. It's like, I get to do what I want to do, you know? I'm a black man living in Los Angeles in 2018 instead of a black man in Mississippi in 1814. There are things we can complain about, you know, but it's all about perspective. There's nothing I can point to that said, well, I would have if it wasn't for that. If I haven't gotten somewhere, it 100% falls on me. What's up everybody and welcome to the show Breaking and Entering, a show where I talk to industry professionals about their career path and their journey. I'm your host, Trimane, and today I have a very special guest. He's a partner at Collins Avenue, he's a content creator, he's a producer, he's a showrunner, he wears so many hats. Without further ado, Michael Hammond. Thank you for coming, man. I appreciate you being here, man. Well, let's just start from the beginning, man. Where are you from? From right here in Los Angeles. Cali boy. Born and raised. Born in Riverside. Moved uh, to LA when I was two years old. You know, I grew up in, in the valley. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my parents divorced when I was young. Uh, moved around a lot. You know, never like to say we were poor. Mm -hmm. We were just broke my whole life. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, there were there were times when you know we didn't have electricity, we didn't have uh, gas. My father was cooking in the fire in the fireplace. Mm -hmm. You know, to feed us when we had food to eat, you mm -hmm. know, which wasn't every day. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't trade that for the world. Mm -hmm. You know, that sort of made me, you know, as gritty as I am. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, I started selling flowers on the street corner when I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. um, went from there to working at Magic Mountain, Six Flags uh, now, uh, when I was 15 and sweeping, cleaning, the, you know, empty the trash cans. Mm -hmm. um, at 17, uh, you know, I went over to Universal Studios and became Frankenstein because I was 6'4", mm -hmm. you know. Um, did that work there for 12 years. Let's go to high school for a moment. I know you're a sports guy. You play sports in high school. Right. Um, how's that, how does that translate to, to the business that you're in? You know, I think the biggest thing is the competitiveness, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was at a high school, Cleveland High School over in uh, Reseda in the Valley. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, the number two team in the state in basketball. And, you know, so going to Cleveland, I thought, you know, I was, I was heading for the Lakers. Mm -hmm. I was going to play for the Lakers, <laughs> right? And we had an All-American uh, basketball player there named Trevor Wilson. Okay. I, I remember thinking, you know, two of us can make the NBA, you know? <laughs> And then I got to practice and there were about 15 guys in between him and me. And I said, you know what? I better come up with another plan. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I, I took a drama class and um, I just fell in love with, you know, uh, the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, I started off as an actor and, you know, I had some success. I had been in a couple of independent films mm -hmm. and uh, I went up for Days of Our Lives and they, you know, really liked me. And I went before the uh, executive producers and I heard one of them whisper say, he's too tall. And that just, uh, that just ruined it for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was so mad. So I decided I needed the control. I needed the power. Mm -hmm. So that's when I decided to go to film school. Mm -hmm. Being in front of the camera, did that help you transition to behind the camera? You know, when I was an actor, um, this acting teacher, Jackie Benton, um, she said the most profound thing to me that has affected my career. And that's uh, success is not reaching your goal. Success is being on the path to your goal. And, um, you know, along the way, what you want to do may change. But if you weren't on that road, you would never get there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I started off as an actor. Decided, you know what, I don't want to be an actor, I want to be a director. Yeah, you know what, I found out what TV producing was about and said, no, I want to be a producer. <laughs> Hadn't I been on that road to acting, you know, I might be a plumber. So you were a PA at 30 years old. Yeah. What challenges did you face coming in? I, I, I hate to say late, but at 30 years old. Oh, it's late. It, it, it's absolutely late. Um, well, basically, you know, all I knew is that, okay, now I want to be a director. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to USC film school. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, there was only one film school, mm -hmm. you know, and it was USC. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even consider that I wouldn't get accepted. I had an emphasis on critical study. So I understand films like few people do. Uh -huh. Um, but, you know, I was already, you know, I graduated at 27. So I was working six days a week just to be able to afford to go to to uh, USC, mm -hmm. so I didn't learn how to network. I didn't learn how to get a job. And basically, you know, when I was 30 years old, I had a panic attack, saying, oh my God, you know, I'm no longer the young kid. <laughs> if I don't do it now, mm -hmm. I'm never gonna do it. My friend worked at the university studios with me. You know, when I was Frankenstein, she was Woody Woodpecker. Mm -hmm. And her brother uh, was this director named Adam Rifkin. And he was a, you know, a writer, director. He had an independent film that he was making. Mm -hmm. And so she got me a job. And uh, they needed a couple of PAs to work for free, 18 straight hours. I worked. For, I had a 15-minute lunch break, mm -hmm. and I just remember getting home, you know. And it's um, you know, six o'clock in the morning. My body is in shock, mm -hmm. and I'm like, Oh my God, what am I doing? 
<laughs> you know, my, literally my body was just like, you know, and I had to be to set in five hours. Mm -hmm. Not wake up in five hours. You gotta be there. I had to be on set in five hours. There was no Goodness. turnaround for PAs, right. you know. And I, I said to myself, I said, well, this is what you wanted, so you can't quit now. Mm -hmm. After that, it was hard, but then, you know, you sort of make contacts. And, and I had a friend who, from, from school. Mm -hmm. She worked in the art department on commercials and music videos, mm -hmm. and so sort of that's how I got my foot in the door. Hey, tell me a little bit about your first break where you knew, okay, like, this is going to work for me. This is, this is it. The first break was um, The Amazing Race. Mm -hmm. It was like my third job as a production manager. I sold mm -hmm. myself as this producer, <laughs> you know, and uh, they, they happened to believe me. And I just made sure that once I got on The Amazing Race, there was no way they weren't going to ask me back. Mm -hmm. the, the first year, uh, first year, they gave me two shows, sort of a field producer. Mm -hmm. And um, I just made sure that Everyone wanted me to be their field producer, and the next year they gave me five, and Jeez. and the other ones only had one each, <laughs> you know. So um, it was just about you know, okay, every time I got somewhere, okay, I'm a field producer. Okay, now how do I become a producer? Mm -hmm. And the second I got to a producer, okay, how do I become a supervising producer? Right. You know, and you know, the second I got to Collins Avenue, okay, now how how do I own the company? Right. Own the company, okay, now how do I make it a multimedia company? Mm -hmm. It's you know, never being satisfied or comfortable is mm -hmm. sort of what keeps me going, I think. It's not about the moment. And that's what so many people um, don't understand. It, it's, it's, a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, right. you know? Mm -hmm. What advice would you give the people who are aspiring to, like, pursue producing and pursue behind-the-camera stuff in regards to, like, being a senior executive or owning your own company? Because you have the sight. Like, you know how it goes. Um, well, you know, I think it's important that no one's going to give you an opportunity. Mm -hmm. You get to take your opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you can't be too good for anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a director. I'm a writer. I'm a producer. Yeah, but in, unless I have a job paying me doing that, I'm a PA. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm mm -hmm. anything I need to be in order to get there. Mm -hmm. There's no book about, okay, if you do A, B, and C, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You sort of have to be, uh, be ready for that preparation to meet, to meet the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Opportunity doesn't come around twice. If it comes mm -hmm. around and you're not prepared, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, you have to study. You, you know, like, as an actor, you know, everyone thinks, oh, acting is so fun. And yeah, it's a job. It's a job. And you have to put the work in in order mm -hmm. to be good at it, right? It's, it's true for anything. All of us can do what we want to do mm -hmm. when we want to do it. To me, the key to success is doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my longest day was 55 straight hours. You know, I worked 48 hours. I worked 36 hours. I, I did... I did things that just exhausted me, mm -hmm. but, you know, if, if the alternative was not working in the industry, then I did what I had to do. Right. You know? One thing I, I truly admire about you is that you give people breaks. I feel like you're always like one of the first people who step up and help people out. How important is it to you to make sure you are instrumental in growing other people? It's very important that, you know, I give people opportunities. Coming up in music videos specifically, um, you know, there was just not a lot of opportunities and, and, and commercials specifically where particularly being you know a man of color mm -hmm. there wouldn't be two PAs two black people on any set you mm -hmm. were on unless it was a hip-hop music video mm -hmm. and it just didn't make sense to me that okay now they have a whole tribe of people but mm -hmm. they're like yeah I'm you know they're gonna drag me down so I'm like like I that's just not I just don't believe in that right you know now, what I also don't believe in is, okay, I'm down with Michael, so I don't have to work as hard. Right, 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 right. You know, right. so um, if you're one of my people, you can't be as good as everyone else. You have to be better than everyone else, mm -hmm. you know. With my uh, older sister, Denise, mm -hmm. she works hard and, and, and she, she loves it, mm -hmm. you know. And when I was working at Hell's Kitchen, um, I gave my brother a job. Mm -hmm. And he would see me coming around the corner and he would, sure, shake with fear. Because if he wasn't working as hard when I saw him, he knew I was going to put my foot in his ass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the way it is. It's like you can't come in and say, well, you know, I had another brother, you know, <laughs> who uh, decided that, you know, he could go to set and sit in the car because he was my brother. Mm -hmm. You know, that brother got fired, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I'll give you that opportunity, but you, you have to be willing to work hard. Mm -hmm. You have to. This is, you know, my motto is I don't say no to anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to um, work. I say Call me, or not call me, email me, <laughs> email, um, <laughs> once, once or twice a month. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, most people who come at me will do it for two or three months and then they're gone. I said, mm -hmm. but if you keep on emailing me, at, at a certain point, I'm going to get annoyed with you emailing me. I'm going to give right. you a job so you can stop emailing me. <laughs> Let me ask you, uh, what advice would you give your younger self? Um, I would tell myself to, uh, you know, uh, 
not not make decisions based on in the moment uh, emotion, you know, because uh, I could be a little explosive in my, in my younger days, um, you know, to just sort of, you know, look at things and, and take a beat before you sort of respond and just keep on going. You know, ha, you know, would I do it differently? You know, sure, I would, I would love to have started 10 years earlier, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. be here. You right. know, maybe, sure. maybe I would have started 10 years earlier and I would still be, you know, a producer in independent films right. where I wouldn't be as happy as I am now. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I wouldn't change it. People like to ask me, well, you know, hey, you know, how'd you get there? I said, well, I'm, I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm happy with, you know, what my, where my career is at, mm -hmm. but I'm not there yet. You know, I'm not content. Mm -hmm. I'm never probably going to be content. It's just not, you know, until I take over the world, which is, you know, <laughs> I'm just like Pinky from Pinky in the Brain. It's like, I want to take over the world. Right. And until I do that, I'm not going to stop. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Bertrand Van Munster, he's the creator, creator of The Amazing Race. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started working there back in 2005, you know, he was in his early 60s. Mm -hmm. He's still flying around the world, going to all these different countries. Uh, you know, I think he's in his late 70s at this point, mm -hmm. mid, mid to late 70s. I'm like, I want to be like him. Right. You know, I don't plan on retiring. Right, I don't. Right. That's like, I, you, going? you know, mm -hmm. I go on vacation in day two. I'm like, you know, this is fun, fun but, you know, I want to get back to work. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's sort of like the way I look at things. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I, I get to do what I love. Mm -hmm.